Check. I just wanna thank me for doing it when nobody made me For doing it while nobody pays me They can call it crazy, but they don't see it daily And I've been finding ways, don't give a damn if you hating And secretly waiting to see what I do next It feels like a huge flex, I reach in my two chest Never feel too pressed to depress, please miss me With any and all negative energy Ooh. What's going on? Welcome to another episode of, of Opinionated Off Topic Today I'm with co-owner, co-host Carlos Mojica of Opinionated Media I'm Cameron Theory, co-owner co-host of Opinionated Media, and this is Opinionated Off Topic. Today we're introducing Steve, a.k.a. A.O. Rue, Keep It A Buck, Steve Shiesty with the Shiesty Nike mask he's been wearing. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's the alias. You know, this is a very, very important uh, part of Opinionated Media. Um, If you guys don't know, me and Steve have been doing some stuff throughout the year, which I'm sure you guys have seen in Keep It A Buck, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But Steve's, you know, always been around, supporting us, uh, been part of the journey, and then, you know, Incorporate, incorporating him into opinionated media has been a good thing. It's been a great thing for all of us and super talented uh, individual. And we're excited to dive into his story and, you know, kind of reflect on the year and chop it up. So without further ado, let Carlos do his uh, honors and thank jump you. right into it's my it. my turn, finally. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for taking now. time out your day, coming on the show. It means I'll, a lot. I'll, and I say it every episode, but it honestly does mean a lot. I mean, without, I mean, not without y'all, this wouldn't go, but it wouldn't just be as sentimental and exciting as it, yeah. as it is. But no, you live kind of far, so hey, thanks for. I've you know. I've been watching y'all since y'all were in the basement, bro. I tell you, one of my favorite videos. It's on my playlist on YouTube. Is uh, is the that Piff rankings right of you three? That was that. That was a <laughs> man. That was yeah. at uh, my parents' house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll OG. never let that go. I'll hey, never let that go. Somebody's got to say. <laughs> yeah. something. I'll never let somebody's that go. Somebody's got to say something. That, that was dis- that was disrespectful. Somebody's that gotta, was dis- somebody's got to say something to get the you're comments going. You're talking about an album that arguably had like five of that years slash generations hits. Oh, for sure. You, you at least five. On album, one of the highest selling albums. What did they of all rank time. it? What number one? They That's why you were one? yeah 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 because yeah. you were so you're like bro what? no no way. I was just I was hurt, but um but aside from that you know I've been watching you guys for a minute, bro. Obviously <laughs> I I have a lot of uh um. I have a lot of love and respect for y'all because y'all were one of the first reasons like I actually started watching and listening to podcasts. Um, okay. I remember always seeing them around. Honestly, I remember seeing the app in the app store for a while. Like as a kid growing up, like when you had your first iPhones, like you saw the podcast. Mm-hmm. App. Oh, the Apple podcast. Yeah, yeah and I was like, like I was like, bro, what is a, what's a podcast, right? And then you obviously you hear about like the very first podcast that Joe Rogan experiences and your um, uh, Joe Budden shows, mm-hmm. a lot of Joes in his game. Um, but a lot of like earlier podcasts I didn't really pick up on it. And then I started, I remember watching y'all's first episodes on YouTube and then seeing everything come out. And I was like, all right, like I have a reason to actually listen to these, right? My, my people are putting something on. Let me at least get a little bit informed. So just to be on this now and kind of like look back from when you guys were doing that to this conversation, uh, it's, it's super surreal, bro. It's honestly like a, it's an honor. You Thank know you. what I mean? Thank so. You. Yeah, we've been we've been doing it a while now, so yeah. it's 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 been it's been fun. It's been a journey. Crazy, it's, uh, bro. I mean, to see to remember where we started, to even remember how we long, young we look to look yeah. now, bro. It's even last year and even videos this year. Like we just, it's crazy. Just like how because it really hasn't been that long. Yeah, but it has been that long. So it's it, like re- really seeing like it's progression, been, bro. It's been a grip, like a I. What was the other one? Um, the Fearful Fridays and the Bean Boozled. Yeah. When y'all did the the fry sauce, and then y'all did the be- the Bean Boozled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I just remember the setup of those videos. Man. And then when oh y'all first God. started shooting in HQ, I was like, oh, bro. You start seeing everything pop up in the back, and it's dope. It's like you know, it's, pro- it's progression, right? It's crazy. So that's yeah. why, like, it's just being on here it's, now, seeing all that. I'm like, bro, I've I've watched this come up, and now even just like you coming over and like the flag filling up periodically every time you come over, like getting more and more names on I mean, it. but it tells the story itself to y'all's credit, right? Y'all sat here and put together a plethora of individuals, you know, have gotten to know them, have gotten to understand them. And I think the most important thing is that you put them first, right? You know, kind of ties into the slogan of what you guys do, bring creative dreams to life. Mm-hmm. But it's, I mean, it's it's pretty dope because 
each part of that contributes to what opinion that it is, right? It's everybody's opinion. It's what they do. It's who they are. It's what they represent. So that's really what made me a fan of it. But like I said, I respect the hell out of both y'all. And I have a lot of love uh, for the two of y'all as individuals, as people, and as uh, creatives. Because y'all are two like hardworking people. Y'all are two people who nat you know, naturally embrace the grind. So just to be in this position, just the fact y'all asked me, uh, it means a lot to me. Because like I said, I, I, I admire the hell out of y'all as, as, as my friends. Um, as workers, just as all around people, bro. So like I said, this moment is like, it's surreal because it, like as the day has gone on, it's just hit me a little by little. So, you know, we have this conversation yeah. and I'm like, man, this is kind of crazy. Appreciate so. that. Yeah, you know for I mean? sure. Shit, before it made me cry. <laughs> so, yeah, tell, let me all get into you now. Though. Tell us a little about yourself, you know, where, where, um, you, where you're from, how, how you got to the position you are now. So, I mean, you know, I was, uh, I was an Air Force brat, originally born in uh, Minot, North Dakota in a little Air Force base. Fun You're fact. born in North Dakota? Isn't that where Wiz Khalifa's from? Yep, exactly. Yeah, 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 Me and yeah, him yeah. were born in the same hospital. Okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah, same hospital on the same Air Force base. So, uh, I was born there, Air Force brat, moved around a lot as a kid. Like Who was in the Air Force? My dad. Your dad? Yeah, my dad. He was MP. So, uh, we moved around a lot. Didn't really settle down. Like, settled down in one spot for longer than a year until probably four or five, right? I was in Kuwait overseas. Um, in the Middle East, I was in Vegas, I was in California, um, we were everywhere. And then we finally got to Texas. And the first place I ever settled down, shout out to 254, was Clean, in Coppers Cove. So my dad and my mom used to stay in Clean. My grandparents were over in Cove. And uh, we got to Pflugerville because my mom got a job over here. So then I moved over there off of uh, Killingsworth and Boulder Ridge, right down the street from Pflugerville Elementary. And uh, really been here ever since. Went to Hendrickson High School, go Hawks. Um, no, you see that boy Smadre putting up three TDs. My first, uh, first Bengals running back, and I think first running back in the NFL. I think that's more of the OU DNA than him. So. Oh, here, here we go. Well, it had to start somewhere, though, right? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It had to start yeah, somewhere. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, we uh, went to Hendrickson, graduated, uh, and then I got a football scholarship. This is the craziest thing, right? So I, I went to play football um, out of high school to Southwestern Assemblies of God, right? It's a small uh, D or D one, small NAIA D one. Uh, out of Waxhatchee, Texas. Obviously, you guys interviewed Germ, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's where I met Germ and really developed a solid relationship with him. But um, it was crazy, man. I, I I really didn't play in high school. Like, I played football, you know. I, I love football. Football is one of my passions. But I, I was on a varsity to my senior year, and then even then I was used sparingly, right? So, like, I went out of my way to find a scholarship. And it was more so at that point out of going to school and being smart or proving a point to myself, I chose ball. You know what I mean? So before you get into that story, let's just kind of backtrack a little bit. Absolutely. So growing up, like how what, what were your ages like? Just keep moving and moving and moving and moving. Like when did what? How old are you when you finally settled down in Colleen? Probably about four or five. I want to say probably about four or five. Uh, I remember going to Maxdale Elementary over there off Willow Springs, mm -hmm. and that's like I had a daycare over there, and then uh, Maxdale. And then in the first, halfway through the first grade is when I came to Flugerville. Do you do you remember like moving vividly like that? Like moving to Kuwait, <laughs> moving to Vegas? I have slight memories. I want to say I don't remember everything, but there's instances like I feel like yeah. I do. Um, <clears throat> so it was it was a lot. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot. Uh, we just we moved a lot, right? Yeah. Dad's in the military. Um, you're going from place to place. He goes overseas and. You know, we were in Kuwait for a little bit. Then we were like, actually, this place is not safe. Let's go back home, right? So then we go to well, my mom's side of the family, and we're in Vegas, right? Then you're in Vegas in a little bit till my pop got back. And then when my pop got back, we came back down to uh, either California or Texas from that point. But I want to say I got to Texas and really was here from about four. It's about, and clean from like four to six. Four, yeah. Okay. First grade, so seven maybe. Um, but for halfway through first grade is when I came to Louisville. So... so you mentioned that you played football in high school. Mm -hmm. Before all high school, did like growing up, did you did play any sports? Like, I guess being uh, overseas, did you like pick up soccer or anything? Oh, uh, man. I mean, football wise. No, you're young, but. Football was the first thing. Football it was, was the first yeah, sport? Yeah, it's, it's, that's where it started. Uh, soccer, um, baseball, and then I got hit by a baseball and I like threw that away. Those pipe <laughs> dreams were gone, son. Um, that's how it is, hey. Ah, bro, look, I got, I caught one to the thigh. And after that year, that was fifth grade. I just, I. Done out of so there. So I was weird. I was. I enjoyed getting if I when I'm hitting, I you, enjoyed getting hit. You're nice though. That's the thing. Like you, you were nice. No, I'm not. 
or, or <laughs> I wasn't. But uh, like, I not, enjoyed getting hit. Let's not the only about time it. that I like, I, the, there's only one place I would absolutely not get hit at. Yeah. And that was my hands. And if a ball was coming at my hands, I, I'm moving. Yeah. Like that's the only place I would like, I'm not getting hit at. But there anywhere else? I'll get that, hit. That's yeah. just, bro. There's, there is one time where I got hit two times in one at bat. So the pitcher pit, threw the ball, hit me in my back left calf. Like, bro, that's the so umpire. I, I I went to first base. So though. random. The umpire called me back. And he said I didn't make an attempt to move. Literally the next pitch, the next ball hit me in my right calf. Yeah, I just looked back at him. He was like, "Go ahead." <laughs> I was like, "You know what I, I mean?" Like I, I so I don't I don't know how y'all did it. I mean I, bro, couldn't couldn't play black. Like, Some I, of us grew up faster than others. It's okay. I, Oh my god! I bro, I literally just, I was just. <laughs> no, like, I mean it's scary because I mean you get introduced into a like an actual baseball, not like a t-ball. Yeah. Um, pretty young, and I mean there's I think, yeah, kids, they had, they there's had kids out there that just don't know how to catch a ball, don't know how to catch properly. Which, Some kids don't know how to throw properly, so it like goes into like another direction. Which you, can hit you know a kid. what I mean? So that wasn't my issue. So like when I remember when I played baseball, I was uh I was I was second base, right? I was second base, and then I was a uh, outfield middle. So I was quick side to side, like up and down, eh, but like side to side, I can move. So I remember playing second base and a lot of the kids, obviously, you know, you're in, you're in second grade, third yeah. grade, fourth grade. Nobody's really hitting no dingers or nothing like that. But I, you know, got my little ball, sat there and tossed it, felt good about myself, yeah. right? I was, making the, I was making the right plays or whatever, the, you know, I'm saying whatever you do at second or third grade of playing ball, right? You're just listening to what your coach has and doing it. But I mean, I went out there and... Like I, I just remember playing, and like I said, I, I caught just so many two unlucky balls, and football was getting a lot more serious at that point. You're in Texas, right? So I just I just gravitated naturally more towards football, and then after like I, no, bro, I was, no basketball. I yeah, I did play basketball a little bit. I played basketball throughout sixth grade. Sixth grade was my last year of like like regular like. Like Typho basketball, essentially, mm-hmm. or not Typho, but like you know, you get it. Um, PYBA. Yeah, yeah, PYBA. 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 I was exactly. like, what's it called? PYBA. PYBA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, football had Typho, yeah. basketball PYBA. So I played. Uh, I played basketball all throughout sixth grade. Right, I got to seventh grade. Uh, tried out for the basketball team, and my ass got cut. I wasn't even mad at it because I know I wasn't a hooper like that. Right. Yeah, that's just, crazy. How the hell did I make the teams and y'all did not? Hey, bro. I, honestly, I, I just, didn't try. I, I in, really in, in high school. I didn't try. Well, you know, you well, just in middle school. Did you? Yeah, did, I played at. No, I, I didn't go to a regular middle school. I went oh, yeah, to charter. Charter, yeah. hey, charter kid. You didn't go to Fugerville Middle. No, nah, nah, it didn't, it didn't matter. School, it didn't boy. matter because I went to Fugerville. I still started on eighteen, bro. That shit don't. Wait, matter. wait, wait. You, you about basketball? You really didn't go I'm to Fugerville? I'm just like a pure athlete though. It didn't matter. Wait, no, I didn't know. You really did not no, go to Fugerville no. Middle School. I just knew everybody because I grew because I went to the elementary school, so I grew up with everybody. Oh. And then fourth through, fourth through, like I went to charter school in fourth grade through eighth grade. But I still knew everybody. So by the time I went to high school, it explains why he is the way he is. Do, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Yo, bro, I did not know that. Hey, hey, hey! You know what I'm saying? Only a few athletes signed. I was one of them. Wow, talk to me nice. Anyways, well, I, no, look, I, I get it. I get it. Right. Yeah, so yeah, I played. You know what I'm saying? You know, nice, right? To my point, he's oh, nice. No, 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 no. So <laughs> I, I played basketball sixth grade, just just doing it really because my friends were. I loved basketball, but I didn't love it crazy enough. And I also just like I said, the drive was mainly for football and everything I did. So I just, I just, I don't understand because Alex got cut too. Alex, yeah, but you yeah. know he probably wasn't hooping like he is now. Yeah, but like I, like I wasn't, like I don't know, I, like you I'm not just that very nice. good. Weren't you a quarterback? No, nah, but school? you got, but you, you were definitely a lot more athletic when we were younger. I'm about like, to say, what you, you're, you're, you were, you were, you were, hold on, hold on, hold on, you were a quarterback. Backtrack that. What you mean when we were younger? You had as athletic. Wait, wait, so I'm not now. I don't know. I don't see you doing That's anything. That's tough. You hear this, man? That I'm is, just saying. I don't know. Man? I don't know. That is tough. Hey, from what I've seen, I mean, this man used to be one hand catches. I mean, like I still can't do that. He was a quarterback, bro. Like, I, I, I can't do that. Remember that? Like I still can't. Hey, if I, you say it's God, it's hey, God, it, it is. But I'm hands, just, I mean, it just doesn't go away. You know? Yeah, yeah. But Come I mean, on, um, what? Uh, we got to get him on the sacrifice up. training field. That's all I'm saying. No, we got some stuff coming up yeah, soon we got there. Some, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> uh, what position did you play in football? I was a linebacker, a tight end, and a uh, a bandit, essentially. So, like, they rolled me down from safety to uh, linebacker, like, because we ran a 4-3 and a 3-4 when I was that's, in college. That's so interesting to me because, like, your body type isn't, like, you're not, like, built like a linebacker. Yeah. You're not built. You're more like a receiver Corner so, like so the I played DB receiverville. I played DB when I got to college, right? Because okay. because uh, well, when I was in you played linebacker in middle school, right? I played linebacker literally my entire life. I was a weak side linebacker. 
Or I was more so, I was always too opposite of the strength, but we ran our defenses funky. Even at Hendrickson, we ran a 4-3. Well, we you ran went a to Crest. Yeah. You, Park, played, you played linebacker there, right? Yeah, Park Crest ran a 4-2-5, though. They ran a 4-3 and a 4-2-5, which was weird to me. I don't remember. It's a little advanced for high school. Bro, I, bro, literally, I was in seventh grade. Team? I was on... B team seventh grade no eight team or I was not I was on B team both years I was on B team both years because I was so, on I remember vividly too because I forgot oh, I can't remember his name Coach Sprinkler can't remember his name but he was like uh, he was that uh, I don't know if you'll make A team but I think you'll be a beast on B team Lit. then I made A team and then I was a beast on A team literally bro the craziest <laughs> thing to me is like like playing on B team and and being just like I, I always. And this is not, I worked my butt off, right? When it came to football, like trained, did all this stuff, applied myself. And as I got older, like I got more fine tuned with my IQ. Even as a kid, bro, like they just be like, all right, um, Steve, line up at tight end. You're going to come back and take a sweep across. I'm like, I'm, I'm like 11 or 12. I'm like, okay, cool. Like yeah. logistically, you've never seen a tight end sweep before, right? But like we were running <laughs> like a power, like we were running an I formation. I'm lined up on the right. Yeah. Quarterback comes out, gives me the ball, and I'm running like 30 yards down the field. It just it didn't make sense, but you know you're in middle school, they throw anything, right? So yeah. so that's you know, and then uh, eighth grade was a little bit more serious. I stuck more so to defense, but they had me on offense. Um, and then when we got to high school, it was just straight. It was a uh, freshman year was you played two positions, and whatever position they liked you at more, they kept you at. So they had us playing on freshman teams that um, at, they had us train with both positions, and then the coaches were just like, you know what, you're better on defense. We're gonna that's keep what you they did at Hendrickson. I swear on everything. Hmm. Did they do that for you, uh, nor- normally that means they you have do, a secondary they, position. You de- they definitely did. You would have like an offense day and then a defense yep. day when you were younger. But then as you get to varsity and progress, then you're not gonna mm-hmm. have to do that as much. Because so. at Stony Point, I was straight just defense or offense. What were you quarterback? I, so I had two. Yeah. Um, I was the backup quarterback for a team. Yeah. But I was also starting wide receiver. Yeah. Um, and then when I came to Pflugerville, it wasn't like that. I was just, One I went for quarterback, and then <clears throat> I, the offense, I just couldn't run the offense, because yeah. I was just so used to shotgun, and they're in the y'all wing did, I forgot y'all did at that time. And, yeah. and, they're, and they're in wing T, and then I, I just, I couldn't get the playbook down like that quick, Yeah. so I asked if I could, sw- go, I was like, can I just be wide receiver? And then they're like, well, I mean, you can try it out, and then... um I switched wide receiver. I never played like in high school. I never played defense. Yeah, and which was funny because in middle school, all I played was defense. Yeah, yeah. At, at Parkcrest, I was on defense, and then no, well, I was on defense and offense at Parkcrest, and then I was about to say they had some multiple then, positions at Parkcrest, and then at Hopewell, I was straight defense. I was a linebacker. Yeah, and then I went to Stony Point. Then I went to offense. And then when it came to Fuggerville, I was I was still on offense. Yeah, so that was, that was it for me. I was, I mean, more or less, I was. Uh, <laughs> the last time I played offense was probably my sophomore year of high school. But I remember my freshman year back when we were still, I think, in Lake Travis's in the district with like Lake Travis and Huddle and uh, Elgin and everybody else. Um, like that's right before six A became a thing. Um, we played Lake Travis and we had traveled over there. Like I think it was like my I had three touchdowns that year, right? But my first touchdown I had on offense came against Lake Travis. I ran a five yard out, and I don't know what I did. I really don't. I don't know if I like fourteen year old, fifteen year old Rue was really just that crazy, or I, it was just like a, the stroke of greatest luck ever. But when I hit my out, I remember in my head I was thinking, I was like, all right, I gotta hit this man like Megatron, come on my cut, and then bust out. And then I and I remember mid play, I was thinking like, wait a minute, what am I doing? Like I lost, I I, I completely forgot what the play was, so I just ran up. And I got right here, and the guy came to grab me. Like, he came to, like, jam me, and I pushed off of him and turned inside. And when I turned inside, he caught my foot, and I was falling, but the quarterback had already thrown me the ball. So I just remember, I was like, well, just put your hands up and catch it. So I put my (laughs) hands up and catch it, and I fall down, I'm in an end zone. And I was like, oh, oh, ah." You know, I was was just hype. Bro, it was possibly, like, it it was, like, I felt like I made a mockery of myself, but it just... You know what I'm saying? It probably looked stupid. It probably did, but I came down with the ball. You know what I mean? That's all that matters. That's all that matters. It was in the end zone. So six uh, points went up on the board. I'm telling you, dog. You know they're not 
I'm not talking about that. We got whooped by them. I mean, even oh. like Travis's B team as a freshman was stout. So I was, I'm sure. you know, them boys were them boys were still running like four sixes. I was like, is, why, is he 25? Why'd you, why didn't you want to play offense? Um, if I would go back and do it again, I probably would play offense to be but honest like, with at you. That, at this point, why didn't, why didn't you play offense? I love defense. Like I, I really like my favorite player of all time is uh is is he's a safety but he plays like linebacker Roy Williams, thirty one obviously Dallas Cowboys right, like the reason I fell in love with football. Some more OU DNA. Oh Shit my god, everywhere. bro, he's from Texas originally though, so yeah. you can hand, you know what I'm saying and like he's a, you know he's a dog though. Is what he Thorpe Winner. You know? Yeah, so I watch I watch I watch him get in I watch him know, get indicted uh, into the OU Hall of Fame. Don't worry, I was yeah. I watched it. I was the same as you, <laughs> Roy Williams. Yep. Bro, biscuit. That's funny. Biscuit. <laughs> Bro, legit, Biscuit was my favorite football player, and still is to this day my favorite that football player of nice. all time. It was him, and then it slowly graduated to Demarcus Ware. Yeah, I can understand that because that, that's how easy the transition was for like leaders of the defense, right? Yep. So we didn't really have a defensive player like that until from Roy Williams and that defense. He he was a leader by far to me, right? Oh, for sure. And then transitioning, we got Demarcus Ware, and then Demarcus Ware just turns it up, and there wasn't really anybody like Demarcus Ware when he was there. Him and Oh, you're talking about the NFL or on the Cowboys? On the Cowboys. On oh. the Cowboys. Shit. Yeah. Sh- Sean Lee early in, Sean, in his early, early years. Sean Lee, early Sean Lee. Got hurt, and then now, it's, Sean now was, it's like Micah Parsons. I feel like, exactly. I feel like y'all well, I'm talking yeah. about the time that Demarcus Ware was there. Sean Lee the came only on, other one maybe a year or so maybe, after. Maybe Brady James. Maybe. I wouldn't even say that. But that's what I said. Maybe. I wouldn't even I say that. Even, you really can't think of anybody from those years except for, you know what I mean? Demarcus Ware. Terrence Newman was ass. Those years too. Um, funny yeah. enough, you remember Greg Ellis, right? Mm-hmm. He's Sagu's head coach now. That's cool. Went we uh, we went to the victory ball under him this year. My guys lost, but yeah, we um yeah we got him as a head coach. It was crazy. We went from the head coach I graduated with to him. It was the it was, that's cool. Yeah, it was the weirdest thing ever. So when you were in high school, like, were you playing a lot on varsity, or like, how was your varsity playing experience? Varsity playing experience didn't come to my senior year, okay. believe it or not. Um, played probably in about like five, maybe, maybe hard, maybe on six. I think I can still find my huddle. You may only actually see four or five games on it, right? I don't mm-hmm. I didn't I really didn't play a lot. Mm-hmm. Um I had a really I had a really good player in front of me. I'm gonna give him all his props because he was he was a dog in high school. I don't know if you remember Kiko. I do remember Kiko. Um Kiko yeah. was a starting linebacker for like three years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, he, he started since sophomore year. Yeah, literally. Yeah. I mean, he was a dog, bro. Like he was he was nasty. And then that linebacker core at Hendrickson, bro, I'll give they were all dogs. Every mm-hmm. single one of them. Jordan Williams was on that linebacker crew. Yeah, he's um, and he was crazy, right? You had his brother on that linebacker crew, I think the year before I got in. Um Dejour obviously was DeJour, on the, he was yeah. a middle linebacker. Um, you had a lot of you had a lot of good guys that played. So I mean, those guys were. That, I mean, I, I learned a lot from them, and that's part of the reason why I got to play at the next level was because of being behind those guys. But I just I had a lot of talent in front of me, um, and it you know it sucked. But I just worked and I kind of did what I I could do. I, I could have taken a lot more stuff seriously too at that time. Um, For sure. But you know yeah. you don't. Hi, hindsight's obviously twenty twenty. So, uh, I, like I said, I, I was I was on. Uh, freshman B, JV, freshman B, JV, B, I think JVA and B, junior year, they moved me up at the back end of my junior year to A. Um, and then senior year, obviously, varsity. Um, and, you know, obviously you play the scrimmages, right? Uh, you play the first few games, and obviously you get into the thick of the season, right? They start keeping their players, how they're keeping their players. So I just really had special teams reps. Um, I just kind of, like I said, I, I played my barone, I embraced it, and I just stepped up whenever I was called. But I definitely could have done more to – to up the ante for for the most part, but yeah. So so what, if you knew you had all this talent in front of you, like what made you not want to move positions? I don't know. Like it's it's funny because I remember um, whenever JV would come over. You know, obviously like being on varsity, right? You practice against the JV guys, right? So whenever I was going up against offense coming up. It was all it, it was you know you do your one on ones and you go through sevens and then you run through like script obviously and all that fun stuff and uh, and it, it sucked being on the defensive side of it because you can't really hit nobody right um, receivers they blow down on contact obviously you have to touch a quarterback have to let them play through the whistle running scout cards yeah lime yeah. like linemen interior like interior linemen and the front seven really are the <clears> ones <throat> that are getting the look right and then if you're coming downhill right. You already know who you're gonna run into, Samaje. So you know how fun that shit was. So you know you do interior and you have to come down and lay the wood, and you can't go long, Samaje, obviously, because you know you're not you're, you're not gonna be that guy, yeah. right? Yeah. You're not gonna be the guy that there's there's no way. So 
just literally it was reps and reps and reps. And then when I got to about my junior year, um, I want to say I was practicing on both sides. I, I remember doing like offensive reps against our defense, mm -hmm. like hopping in at running back and running against our own defense, like varsity wise, because some of the younger running backs at the time were like too scared to get in there and do t or do so. You know, they're like, oh, I don't want to go in there and get hit. They're just using me as a practice dummy. What the, f you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, well, go get better. No, it's not you out here, yeah. you might as well, right? You know, you want to get some reps against like yeah, you want to you want to do something instead of just standing at practice, bro. Legit, and if if you want to be there one day, you have to. I, I'm a firm believer of practice, like you play, right? So if you want to go, if you want to go, if you want to be the best, you got to go against the best. And if this is where you're gonna go against the best, is your own varsity and practice on some actual like good on good, then you take the reps and you run with it. So I remember like my junior and senior year, like I started when I was with the defense my senior year and I wasn't in, and I would see the JV cats like we're getting scared to like play a tight end and go block our linebacker, right? Or hop in there as a receiver and block a DB or um, be the tight end or, like, running back, whatever. I'd be like, hey, come, come on. You know, me and a, me, we, had a, we had a bunch of guys that did that, right? We, just didn't, we didn't care, right? We wanted to get our guys better. And so that's kind of more or less, like, I don't, I don't know why I didn't stick to offense and I don't know why I didn't approach it more, but I, I don't know, man. It just, it, like I said, I, I stepped in where I was needed, I felt like, and just did what I was supposed to do. I was more so a student of the game. So that's that's just where that came from. I tried to learn everything I could. Yeah, it happens for a reason. Landed yeah. you where it landed you. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. then um, I guess so going through that struggle, and we all know how hard the recruiting process is, especially yeah. I mean, granted at Henderson it was a lot better for y'all. Like y'all's coach actually cared. I mean, look at the amount of athletes that got put out and went D one out of the classes that were there, especially in the prime Henderson, like fourteen, fifteen, those yeah. two classes. And even after that, um, but for you, like not having as much film as you would like, um, trying to get recruited, like when did you know you wanted to go to the next level? And then what were your, what were the steps that it took you to get there? Like, did you go to camps or? I did go to camps. Um, <clears throat> I loved football at the time, and I loved it a lot. And it was something I wasn't ready to walk away from. Um, and I, I was just wholeheartedly set on. If I can go play football, I want to go play football, right? I don't know what that looks like. You know, as you, as you start really looking into the recruitment process and you start really um, looking at schools, oh, bro, you're emailing. Like, you're emailing and you're looking at schools. Like, I, I was like, oh, sh there's an AA schools in North Dakota. No, there's an AA schools in Kansas. <laughs> there's a D3 over here in uh, Colorado. There's a, there's a D2 over there in um, Iowa, right? There's just all, there's a lot of schools. And you're like, all right, well, how many coaches do I have to get in contact with? So you just start, like, shooting out from the recruiting coordinators. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, if you, you don't get a lot of reps or maybe it's even more so like, right, being overlooked, right? You're a yeah. guy that got consistent reps yeah. um, as a varsity starter. Mm -hmm. And I feel like even partially you were overlooked, right? Oh, for sure, yeah. So, and I play with a lot of guys kind of in that same manner, guys who mm -hmm. should have got their looks but were overlooked. So, um, at that point, you're kind of just tossing, right? You're tossing, mm -hmm. you know, you want to play, you know, you can't play. You know, you at least want to try. All you need is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, I just, I shot everything out and, it, you know, it... It sucked because there were some people who actually did show me love and reach back out. Like I, I remember going to uh, a, a UNT camp at Cedar Ridge, mm -hmm. um, and I did like I remember the coach talking to me after, and I felt like really good about it because he was like, "Hey man, you, I haven't heard of you. Like, where are you from? Like, you know, who do you play for? What high school? Are you like, yeah, yeah." He was chopping it up with me, and he was like confused because he had never like he had never saw me, he had never heard of me, nothing, but. He was like, man, you look like you look like you got good mechanics, man. You know, you 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 were really hard worker. You played well in all the drills and everything. Like I'm, like I'm kind of surprised. And I was like, yeah, man. I, you know, I told him my situation, what was going on. He was like, oh, okay. Like and he just he looked confused essentially. Yeah. And that's when I was like, all right, you know, some, some, sums up. And I mean, I get it, right? You know, your coach is naturally going to put out uh, the bigger players or the players that are at least garnering attention. And I wasn't hateful or like, well, why aren't you putting me on the map? I, dude, I'm, I get it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but I just knew that was going to fall on my lap if I really wanted to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of how I got to Sagu and found my home there is uh, just the head coach at the time, Frank Tristan, coach man, that, that man that just, there's a lot of good things I could say about him as a person, but as a coach, he's probably hands down one of the best coaches I've had in my like entire playing career. Just, just guy that really gave me a chance and um, allowed me to come there. And like I said, I, my, my grades were fine, right? I wasn't a bad student, didn't have anything, but like to play football there, um, you know, he gave me an opp opportunity and he, you know, he even offered me a scholarship, right? And so I was like, oh shoot, right? I didn't, 
I thought I was just going to do a little walk on, see what these private school student loans were talking about and keep it moving my merry way. And, you know, he, you know, he gave me an opportunity. So where is Sagu? Sagu is in Waxahachie, Texas. So it's that is about north, 20 right by Oklahoma? Yeah, so about It's like by Dallas. 20 more. minutes yeah, past about, Hillsboro, about 30 minutes south of Dallas. Yeah. So you have Waxahachie, then you have <clears throat> Red Oak, and then you have uh Lancaster, and then you have DeSoto. After DeSoto is when you hit Dallas. Gotcha. Well, gotcha. South, south Oak Cliff going into Dallas, so yeah. Small. Yeah. yeah. One high school kind of uh they have a private high school there, life uh like life school Waxahachie, but like one public school um but they had a um, freaking uh they they're a couple of the players uh, you know one of them Rager Jalen Rager he was in high school when I went over there um I want to say for two years I want to say um but Rager was in high school at the time playing for them uh I remember like you know again it's, it's a big football it's a big Texas football town too like they take pride on Waxhatchee. John Kitna, you remember Kitna? He was a co- he was a coach of them <laughs> at the time, legit. Like yeah, I just think of it. So, son, son, the report son, that came out today about his son. son? You didn't see about his son? You didn't see it? John Kitna, our quarterback, his son. Yeah, yeah, his son, well, his son goes well, to Florida. Yeah, well, went to Florida. Went to we'll Florida. show you after the podcast. We'll show you after that. Yeah, you talking about Jordan or no, Jalen? Oh, his younger one. Yeah. Okay, because I watched his older son play. Yeah, Jalen. Oh Jaylen. boy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but yes, point being is, like, he, you know, so he was the coach at the time, which was crazy to me, because I was like, oh, he used to be our quarterback, you know, came to our school and spoke, I even caught a flick with him, which was, you know, for me, I'm, you know, Cowboys fanboy, too, yeah. so I'm always like, oh, sh-. um, old, uh, old, uh, yeah, when he played with us, yeah, bro, old, so, boy rocking, though, <laughs> hey, you, you gotta do what you gotta do, right, Rex. so, look, man, I, uh, you know, so, it was it was small man, small football yeah. town. A lot of good places to eat. I'll tell you that. We put my boy Cam on a, on that hibachi out there, man. That place is good. All right. So yeah. it's stuff like that, right? That's what it made good. it was. A, it was a wholesome town, you man. Went out there? Yeah, it was when we went to we went to see Mike. I was on the way back. Yeah, we stopped going uh, okay, okay, Dallas. Okay, okay, okay. We stopped yeah. in Waxhatchee. Show. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you one of the little spots because you know it's right there off 35. It's, yeah. It's small. It's like what kind of food? It was a uh, hibachi essentially. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, you can't go wrong with hibachi. Um, and it, it, thing but it was, like, it was like it was like fast food hibachi. But yeah, it was, but it was like still freshly made. Still, yeah. yeah, everything was amazing. Yeah, like, it was really that's good. That's cool. It's, it's, you know what I'm so saying. go to Sagu, yeah. play football, go there four years, yeah. graduate, yada yada yada. Beginning the podcast, you said, um, "I see y'all doing this." And it made me realize that I can do this. Mm-hmm. So from where in that sagu, post sagu, pre sagu, if that was the case, like where, where, where did you find like content creation is something you wanted to do or like to do? So I'm gonna tell y'all something, All right? <clears throat> content creation, like the bigger picture of it, really hit me as a kid through music. Because mm-hmm. I used to rap. Mm-hmm. There's videos literally me on YouTube from my freshman year of high school performing at Hendrickson's Talent Show. I had people screaming my god dang name. On another note, um, <laughs> <laughs> no man, um, music. Music is really where it started as a kid, right? So I could really date it back to Sagu because my dad made music. He was a rapper, um, and then he put me on so much music. We were listening to classical. We were listening to R and B. We were listening to blues. We were listening to soul. I listened to funk. My mom was listening to alternative. We listened to rock. So music was always a big thing for me. So I used to write songs as a kid, right? Um, and I don't even know if I could begin to find these, but um, I had journals where I was literally writing songs, right? Writing songs to different beats, going on YouTube on the computer, just writing, 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 writing. Um, and then, you know, that writing turned into uh, still writing songs, but then writing, you know, journaling and actually writing and stuff like that. So as a kid, that's where, you know, that's where it started. Um, and as I got older, it expressed itself kind of in different ways and manners. I like throughout high school, um, when I was in, when I was in a, I was like a junior. No, when I was a sophomore and a junior, I was in theater, um, and so I used to do speech and debate competitions, right? So I did acting. I did I did like stage plays because that that you know theater was one of my electives, um, and even growing up and doing school plays, like I was always out of my way to express myself and be more of like a outgoing individual mm-hmm. um and i just you know it was it was some of my favorite things right so i uh, started with music and then i got into like acting and that kind of stuff and then once i got into college um a lot of that stuff naturally kind of went on the back burner because of football um i still write songs right um 
obviously you freestyle with your friends and whatnot, but I spend a lot of my time with my friends who make music. Um, just kind of spending time around them, seeing what that looked like, kind of what all that consisted of, and uh, and everything kind of went on the back burner going into college. Uh, but creatively, like going into uh, 2020 is when everything part of kind of recently in my adult life started to compel itself because I was really thinking, like really thinking like, okay, I want to do a YouTube channel. Um, mm -hmm. And it wasn't necessarily a YouTube channel. I just wanted a platform to put out content, whatever that may be. So if I wanted to make music, YouTube is a, is a streaming platform essentially, right? So I put my music out, people run up the views, right? Boom. You know, you're watching YouTube for this long period of time. And people, YouTube is one of the biggest platforms you can put out your content. So I, it just, it kind of formulated and changed as I went on. And specifically narrowing it down to, you know, seeing you guys, um, when I started my YouTube channel, I was like, well, what can I put out here? What do I want to, you know, what do I want to compel? What do I want to do? What do I want to tell? Who do I want to be? Um, and I, I, I don't know. It was, it was funny trying to necessarily figure out what that thing was that made it snap. But 2020 was the year that it all started to kind of formulate and come together. And that's when I finally put something down on paper and that was with the YouTube channel. But, um, I mean, it started young, man. It you started, started really young. YouTube was it gaming you started off with first? No, it was the Sunday soliloquies. That was your, that's what you started with. That first? was the very first video. Was the Pop Smoke Sunday soliloquy? Where I and then the second was Drake, right? Uh, second was uh, it was Drake, but it was like a more of it was a reaction video. Yeah, but it was like uh, it was like a long form of content though. It yeah, was it was like a, twenty minutes. It was another sun, Sunday soliloquy. It was uh, sure. so it was a reaction video to this dude <coughs> who basically put together a video of Drake uh, recycling lyrics and biting flows. That's what it was, yeah. And it was uh, it was funny because like he was like at some points he was reaching and at other points he was I mean you know all right yeah you hear recycle lines right it, so it was just funny because I was reacting to it um, and it was a uh, damn it was um. It was that was my second one, and then my third one was the Juice World one, and that's when I covered uh, Legends Never Die, and so that's like the first three pieces of content on YouTube I had put out. Mm -hmm. And then your fourth one was the gameplay. Yeah, I'm on. I'm on. It right was now. you started off with Resident Evil Biohazard, correct? Seven, yes sir, yeah. yes sir, yes sir. Yeah. I just had issues with audio because I was, you know, I got the HD 60s plus, and that's I didn't, why. I didn't, I didn't have you. you were well, and you okay. also think about, you got to think about it. I mean. It's your first couple of videos. I mean, the one like low key, the videos that you like watched, the one with us and TJ, like, yeah, that like actually looked good because Albert at the time had knew what he was doing. Yeah, but prior to that, like when we first started, <laughs> like boy, they look like <laughs> shit. Like, and it looked, even like, like even looking at your videos, like when you started, I was like, damn, this is really good. Yeah, like the you had um. Who was Matt was helping you, right? Blue Productions, my guy. <laughs> so you had Matt helping you, and, and that's like, another big influence too. Kind of go back to that because he he jump started that shit. Yeah, he, he definitely. So to your point, right? He <clears throat> lit that fire, and then he just helped me put it together. Yeah, but, and then, no, you just always like you know had it thought out, had your content thought out, and you know executed it well. And you know, so you go from like a Ao Ru Sunday Soliloquy. One, how'd you get the name Ao Ru? Like obviously, Ru is for. Isn't that your last name? Last name, yeah, right? Ruiz. Ruiz. So, how what made you like come up with that name and logo and kind of make that more of so your brand? Because even when you talk to people, you're like, "I'm Ru. I yeah. got my Ru." You know, they can't know the, they can't know the government yeah, name. Which like, which them even yeah. seeing this is gonna be lethal because now you know what I'm saying. They don't hurt my government <laughs> name. Steve Ruiz. They gonna be like, "Oh, that's Steve." I'm like, nah, bro, you don't know me as Steve. Stop it. You know what I'm saying? It's like I it's like you. it's like when they call Drake Aubrey. It's like, you know Albert, it's like Albert, bro. Yeah, yeah. Don't, you don't call I'm Albert. Like, Albert, I'm, like, no, I'm calling you Albert, bro. That's what I know. You I guys. am calling him Albert. Yeah. I don't care what he says. You know what I mean? Like I've like, known him. But, I've known that man longer than Cam's known him. Facts, you know, and I've known him a long time since I, sixth grade. Literally, same. Right? Well, <laughs> I, I went to middle. I went yeah, to middle school too. with him. I went yeah. to elementary school with him. That's what I'm saying. So like, it's hard because you grow up with folks here, and like, okay, so you know, I I get it, right? Yeah, I'm Carlos. I'm Cam. Yeah, you're Cam. But it's always been Cam. Yeah. yeah, it's not like yeah. Cameron. Like no yeah. one says that. Yeah. So, so you know what I mean. Like so his mama when she yelling at his ass. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that, Cameron. All up in his room. <laughs> That's sick, bro. I mean, but those are the only ones that could get it off. My mom be calling me by my full name, and I'm like, relax, 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 because no. Oh, else. when you get a call by the full name, you know you're in trouble. Yeah, bro. It's, it's, something, it's, no, it's never good. It's never productive. It's never good. at all. Yeah. At all. So we um yeah man, Ao Rue derived because uh 
Because, like I said, the nickname Rue came in right. So that's something that's kind of been passed down by uh, by the men on my father's side of the family. Um, it started with, like, my grandpa and then my dad when they were in the military. Because, you know, they, they'd be like, how do you say your last name? Rez, Ruez, Rez, Rez. I'm going to call you Rue. And, and kind of just stuck, right? So all the, all the men were really, like, they, they would call them Rue. Um, yeah. So it was something that it was a moniker essentially that was passed down. That's how I like to say it, right? So it didn't yeah. start with me, but I'm I'm sure you know my dad used to be Big Rue and I was Little Rue, and you know, I grew up, so I'm not you know what I'm saying I'm not like I'm not I'm not gonna be a little I'm not gonna you know just stamp myself You're like still that. Still Little Rue to your dad, boy. Yeah, man. You know whatever, man. That's, <laughs> that, that is that, that's Big Rue, right? So, uh, but yeah, man. Um, so Rue was the nickname, and then the AO was like. It was just like something that flowed. No, it's right? like when you're going down, hey yo, like, you don't, so you don't, so, you know what I mean. Yeah, so like, I understand. So, so you know, like, a part of my family's from the east. So like, you know, a lot of the, or like, you know, New York, the Bronx, like my dad's side of the family, they're all from the Bronx. It's crazy, mm -hmm. like that whole family, like all Bronx. So hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. So you know, it's it just something that stuck, and I hear it, and I'd be like, it goes well, right? Hey yo, Rue. Yeah, just it just it came off the tongue, right? It, it clicked for me and it clicked. I was like, I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm not, I, I, I like it. It's, I can put it together. It's mine. The logo I did on Canva, I was just, I, I, took a, I took a picture. I went on Snapchat. I cropped out my face. I put it on Canva. Yeah. I blacked out the background. It looked good. It cleaned it up. And then I was like, I need a color. I'm like, Teal, go Park Crest. All right, let's move on. <laughs> so, but it's like early days, you know? It's like you, you're, you know, putting everything together. You're trying to find your identity, yeah. right? Yeah. So, you know, the, and I don't know if you were going to change your logo or if you are. It'll or be updated whatever. by all means of the matter. Um, well, you know, it's the same thing. Like, Carl, we got the character heads, you know. Carl doesn't like those logos. What? The, oh, the, the, the very, very first opinion A logo. The very, the, very, the OG? Very, the o -O 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 like, it's never been, OG? Like, I don't think anybody's ever seen, seen those. What's the first one? Because y'all had one it before y'all had. Like, it never, no. it's never been seen. This is the only, like, this is the mean, only one that's been released to the public. I thought y'all had a different one aside from this at mean? the very beginning. No, no it's always been OP. Always been I this. thought the P was lower or the font was different on it. Has it always been there, that? There was, well, you always... might have seen the thumb like have like a black fingernail. Yes. By than that. I don't yes. know because I don't think we, re we released that one because. Your earliest content, I swear. No, I didn't have the black thumbnail because when he got it, I remember he said. That's right. Uh, hey, don't we like it? Can you just take the thumbnail off? We never like got like uh, the physical thing of that. I swear I saw a different logo at at the very like er, like the earliest stages oh. of y'all's videos. Damn, that man, black and red is that's that's been the, been, that, been the yeah. yep. that's it. Yeah. And then our hoodie logo, our hoodie. Yeah, that we got that early, but we never like yeah. all of our other logos. We never really because we have like other logos. Yeah, that again nobody else has seen. Yeah, but we never really used them. Yeah, absolutely. So we just we thought that logo would be good on a hoodie, yeah. so that's when we used it on a hoodie. Basically, that's like, perfect we, for a hoodie. Basically, like we got that boy's on y'all back when y'all did that. And you know it's crazy to look at stuff full circle because we got all those logos prior, and then it's like now. We have like all these logos that we were like we never thought we would use them ever. Yeah. But now it's like oh like like he said slap it on a hoodie or like the oh oh like you which know? is crazy because like that's the thing I think y'all branding ourselves are right. So for me I wasn't settled with my logo. I like it. I think it it signifies like the early stages. But at some point sooner or later I want it to change. Right. I want something to be different. Um, but I'm it's not something that's. I guess too big of a concern, which is why I haven't been so forthcoming in kind of changing it because I I have I've had the opportunity to but. Once, like I said, once I started joining you guys and I started working with Cam on Keep It A Buck and I started like transitioning more to y'all, my, my focus shifted more so away from like me and more so kind of just establishing like everything we were doing with Opinionated, right? So I I never like, I, I that's why I really haven't like taken too much time to be like, oh, I need to update my logo or I need to, do I plan on it? Absolutely. I think it'll help, but I don't, it's, it's something that hasn't really been something that's pressing. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it, it's just... That's my representation. You know what I mean? Not my logo is kind of some people will know me by, but I feel like the name Oh Ru, that's a Ru, he's opinionated, right? You know, that's that's kind of my deal. So I just it's understandable. Logos are kind of weird for me because you make the logo. You make the logo, but also at the same time, the logo has to attract yeah. the audience of yes, whatever it is. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? So it's tough because like, you know, you like look at look at right now, right? Lyrical Lemonade, one of the most notable logos, and you know it's Lyrical Lemonade, right? It's 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 the, it's the box, mm -hmm. Lyrical Lemonade, right? The swoosh, God bless. That's one of the standardized branding, right? That we that we've seen, that we know. You know, look at what it does, right? But it, those are things that carry. They carry over really well. They carry over really easily. You can do a lot with that, right? You can you can you can make it look different. You can add flavor to it. It's it's simple, 
and convenient, but yet you can do so much with it because it's so versatile. So that was like the dope thing, honestly, when we did Keep It A Buck and we changed the OP logo to reflect the colors, I was like, yeah, that's, I get jiggy yeah. with that. Because it's versatile. It's simple, but people know what it is. So, uh, you know, it's one of the best things about branding is you have to be able to be, um, you know, you have to be able to be kind of something that adheres personally to you and what you represent and kind of what you want to brand, but something that people can also apply themselves to. That's kind of the point of branding, right? Um, so, you know, think about it like Larry with the oranges, right? Facts. You know what I mean? You can think about it like Drake with the owl. Yeah. Those are all notable things because of, again, logo that brands that they established the brand, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, like I said, we'll, we'll get something in the works, but like I said, that's that's reason is that's that's more so my logo. That's you know what I mean. Personal stuff can it'll you know, it'll come in due time, right? Mm-hmm. But kind of just like a phase or optic thing, right? Yeah, I feel like pers- like keep it a book is still kind of a personal personal thing though. Like sure, it's under like op, but it's still something that you like to do and wanted to do and enjoy doing. I think y'all gave me an outlet to do it, but I wouldn't have been able to do it without y'all. That's why I'm not going to take, like, it's 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 something I've put love and something that I've developed, but it's not something that I purely did 100% on my own, and it just all came from me. No, there, there's no way. There's a lot of conversations that went into that from y'all. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of experience. There's a lot of things I learned from everybody around me so I could do something like that. You know what I mean? So here comes the hard question. Okay. So... I'm going to say, yes, you could have done it without us. Mm-hmm. But my thing is, since 2020, you've yeah. made content. Mm-hmm. But since 2020, you've made content, stopped, made content, stop, made yeah. content, stop, made content, change content, made content, change content, made content, break, 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 break content. Yeah. What, like, why, like, what's stopping you from just doing it consistently? Because... Every piece of content you put out, yeah. even from the first Sunday soliloquies, everything's been great. Yeah. Like there's no need for even if you just wanted to do those, there's no need to change those. If you wanted to do the gameplay, just fixed audio, there's no need to change those. You brought back the Sunday soliloquy and they were even better than the first ones, and there's no need to change it. Yeah. So like what in Steve's mind, what was what was going on to like I had I got it. I I want to do I can't do this. I want to do something else. I've always been a chronic overthinker. Number one, mm-hmm. um, I'm a perfectionist, and it hurts a lot more than it helps. So, uh, and that's kind of like the ADHD part of me is everything has to. I have to have control of it, right? Um, and when I mean control of it, I don't mean like I have to control every narrative, but I have to make sure that what I put out is authentic. Number one, it's complete. Number two, and it's a reflection of what I want it to be. Number three. Um, so for that to be complete when it comes to content creation, even when it went back to writing for me as a kid, there was like I, I would start, I'd get into a song, I'd have everything plotted out, I think I finish it, I'd make some adjustments, and I I'd, I'd never do like some stuff I started and finished, some stuff I started and then put down, some things I you know you're a kid so your attention span is short or whatever like that right, but for me it kind of progressed because I'd always start something. And I would finish it in some aspects and I wouldn't finish it in others, right? So once I grew out of that habit and I started being more consistent, when it came to content creation and the lens I looked at it in is like anything you love, right? Um, when it comes to a craft, I feel like it takes time and trade to naturally perfect to find who you are and what you do. My favorite comparison naturally is music because I love music. So I compare it to listening to an artist's development. You see them put out their early projects. And they're finding themselves. Maybe quality doesn't sound as good. Maybe they sound different. Maybe they're not as uh, consistent, right? Maybe you hear flashes, but it's just not. There's something that still needs to happen. And then, you know, some artists, they turn around and they put a project down in the next six months, and that project is crazy, right? It's a banger. It's phenomenal. Right? You know, it's that you could see, like, within six months, somehow, some way, they just completely, they, whatever they're doing as, a, as an individual within their branding and how they're delivering their, their, their content, they're... They're different. So for me, in that aspect, I would put something out and I would like it, but a part of me was like, there's something more. I need to sit on it. I need to think. I don't I don't feel like this is I'm doing this, but I feel like I'm doing this just to do it. I don't feel like it's something that's a passion. I feel like I'm overbearing myself with it. This is supposed to be something I'm love, but because I'm thinking too much and I'm putting too much pressure on myself, I'm making it something it's not. And also, it's just not sticking like I wanted to. Like, I'm enjoying making the content. I'm enjoying 
editing, I'm enjoying putting the ones and twos down, but I'm I'm like trying to figure out what's gonna work for me and what's not. Um, and it, it's it's weird, man, because like I said, to your point, right? I, I put out Sunday soliloquies and I put out these videos and then I stopped. And then I put out these videos and then I stopped. And then I put out these videos and then I stopped. And in those breaks, I was like fine tuning myself. I was like, I know you enjoy making content. I know you enjoy what you do. I know you like the process. I know you enjoy the aspect of naturally letting it flow from who you are. That's kind of like the best thing of creating content is it's natural. It's you, right? And you're just putting yourself on a bigger platform. But what is the difference for you that's going to make this authentic to you? Because when I watch YouTube, and again, like Cam said earlier, YouTube's one of my favorite places to like, I, I don't really watch TV. I watch sports, right? I watch big events and I watch YouTube. I don't really watch TV series unless it's something that's like stamped. Shout out how I met your mother and like Snowfall, right? Yeah. But I'm not watch. I'm I'm just not. So I watch uh-huh. YouTube, and a lot of the channels I watch are religiously different, religiously different. But I love the presentation. I love the style. I love the fact that the folks are themselves and that they're putting out something that that makes sense. I'm not like jealous of the fact that they have a brand or that they're putting out a specific type of content or that it's this thorough or any any one of that. But like they have a brand. And they're doing it well. And aside even from the brand pack, their their content seems like meaningful and consistent to them, right? So when I look at you guys, for example, you guys are doing opinionated. When I look at, you know, Park Car Talks, they're doing, you know, PCT. But what y'all are doing is content that seems to be genuine. It seems to be wholesome. And ultimately, y'all don't seem to be overthinking yourselves. It's not a matter of you guys just doing it. But when you're doing it, you're intentional while doing it. And then you guys don't, it just, I feel like it comes naturally for y'all. Like for each one of y'all, like everybody in the group. So when I look at myself, I'm like, all right, there's something that we still need to figure out, right? There's something that needs to be there, but something in you is blocking it from happening. And we need to figure out why is that, why is that happening? So when I got to those moments and I would self-sabotage myself, I would just find myself in this bag like, well, what, did, where do I go from here? What like what what do I do? Growth is a funny thing, right? In general, when you look at exercise, right, and people that are changing their lifestyles, you don't really recognize kind of what's growing on until you stop back and kind of see where you've come from. So on our last episode of Keep It a Book, I played that song by Smino Noels. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has a bar in there that basically talks about how you don't really recognize your growth until you stop back and look at it. So when I look now at, you know, the early Sunday soliloquies, um, I liked it. And I was like, I have, like, content-wise, what I was doing recently is by far a lot better than what I was doing then. I had more help. I had more hands. I had a lot more invested in me. I learned a lot more, right? But it felt like something in me just wasn't. No, complete, essentially. It, it was weird, and you don't see the progress of kind of where you've come, and so I wasn't seeing the progress. You know, you're working out. You work out for 30 days. You're like, okay, I, I, I made it a habit. Like, what, what's the progress like? And you don't see the progress. I mean, you're like, damn, this is even really working for me. So same thing being a content creator. You divide a lot of your hours and a lot of your time, right? You put things together. You obviously take the time to record, post-production, promoting the material. Now, we, obviously, we live in a... We live in a society that is content creation galore, which is a beautiful thing because that's how you really get to know people and a lot of the things is, you know, it's how a lot of these things kind of here have come together, right? Because it all started off in, as an idea, but um, it's tough when, you know, you don't really see things sticking and you feel like you're not going anywhere. Um, and that was a personal feeling because I had a lot of people that would show love and I had a lot of people that would reach out and I had people say, you know, why'd you stop, right? Why you, why you stop being consistent? You don't think good. you changing to different... Things like I guess hindered you from growing because like from a from an audience point of view, it's like all right, I see the Sunday look when I could come to you for that. You posted three of them, and I'm I'm a new viewer. I listen like what I go to YouTube for is music. Yeah, and then you just switch up and go to gameplay. Yeah, and it's like what's going on, and then you stop doing the gameplay, and then you're just absent. Yeah, and then you come back, and then you do another one. Yeah, and then and you're just absent again. It's just weird because you're trying to find yourself, right? So, like, for uh-huh. me, I'm, I don't want to say necessarily I was, like, I was influenced in 
and I also like so you know gaming YouTube was one of the biggest things I got into at first mm -hmm. and I've always had a heart for gaming too yeah. mm -hmm. so a part of me is always like oh I, I want a game you're like, still I, running from the 1v1 absolutely. but it's okay look we're not even gonna go yeah, we, had, we had a competition coming soon that you'll be on our team yeah. so I, look, unfortunately I no that's, that's fortunately for you <laughs> no it's fortunately yeah, for you, you. <laughs> you're gonna see me wick a lot of people bro there's gonna be a lot of broken hearts in the chat Anyways. bro no GG's anyway um, but it um and like gaming, again, gaming was a really big thing for me. So once I found streaming and Twitch, and even aside from that, like gameplays on YouTube were a really big thing, and gaming creation was a really big thing. Um, just seeing people put content on gaming, I was like, oh, I could easily get in that bag. That's that's easy money. What the heck? Like, I'm personality is good for it. Um, I feel like again, the gameplay, obviously, I'm gonna enjoy it. Um, I like I'm I, that's. Yeah, it's easy one. That's my bag. Like, what the heck? You're also like knocking two birds out at once, especially yeah. with like single player games. Yeah. Because when you play single player games, like most people know, like you're talking to yourself, commentating, like yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. And if you can make content from it and enjoy the game, it's like, it's like a no brainer almost. Yeah. You know? So, and, and that's, you know, depending on what you do too, that could be tough, right? Because if you do a lot of edits, a lot of cuts, a lot of clips, you have to spend time in post production. Mm -hmm. So then now a part of that becomes. Is the fun taking away from gaming because I'm having yeah. to do all this stuff with it? Yeah. I can't even enjoy this time to myself now, and I think that's the convenience of like Twitch, right? Mm -hmm. With Twitch, let's say you're um, a lot of Twitch stuff now is like multiplayer games, right? So a lot of people watch like Call of Duty streams, or you're watching uh, Fortnite streams, or you're watching some multiplayer game. But it's like not a lot of people are really playing like a like single player games for the most part. Yeah. Um, so Only time they do if it's like a big name like God of War. Exactly, yeah. right? And, and they'll do like a playthrough and then that's it. Yes. Spider-Man yeah. that came out. Yeah, right. So they just, they play the game once and that's that on that. And I think that's dope because, you know, I'm not saying streaming isn't hard because I know of a lot of people that have crazy setups and have put a lot of time and investment, but I feel like there maybe could be um, less breaks, right? You're not really doing as much production as you would be in the post-production of putting together a YouTube video, right? Yeah. You're not talking about cuts, transitions, sound bites, uh, going into Photoshop and pulling things to put into your video if you're doing anything. Obviously, if you have a green screen and you're editing that, um, one, like one of my like favorite game players to watch uh, that has a face cam, his name is Berlizzi, and I've, I've told y'all about him. Yeah. I met him at a DreamCon, but you know, my boys, uh, Matt, he put me on him too. Uh, Berlizzi, like he has a really good editing team, and if you look at his videos, he you know he runs a face cam. He'll do the introduction. He'll pop up his green screen, and then he gets into the game. So he has the game, and then he has his face in the corner. But his editing team does really well in um, you know making funny transitions and and getting good cutaways and stuff yeah. like that. And obviously, it came from a place, right? It wasn't always like that, mm -hmm. but it just you know seeing that stuff made me think, okay, bet like I can. Well, that's so hard too. Like when you're doing stuff on your own. Yes. It's just a lot harder, it, especially it, before, like, we really got close. And, yeah. Like, you know, like, we're having that camaraderie around each other. Just doing content on your own. It's, it's something like that where you're going to have where you're having to shoot it all. Even the Sunday soliloquies, like, the amount of research it took to, like, that, get, you know what I mean? Get all that information. You have all your facts. It's essentially like a scripted video. It is. Right? You shoot it. You got to make sure everything is, you know, accurate. That could alone, research alone with working, could take like a week probably to do, to get everything you need. And then you have to shoot it, maybe multiple takes, and then you have to edit it. And it's like, damn, all that for one video. And when you're first starting, all that for one video to get maybe 40 views. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like that's like... Where and I'm not afraid of you know that I mean? either, yeah. which but is it like, good But thing. that does weigh on it because it's a natural human like reaction. It's like, damn, bro, I'm putting in all this work to get 19 views on a video. And it's... You know? What do you, you know, you're like, what do you, you know, so where do you go from there? So I put together that, uh, that albums of the year for 2020, right? The top 10 albums I think you should be listening to. And it was one of my Sunday soliloquies. That video is like 50, 55 minutes to an hour. Um, but if you look at the editing in that video, that's probably personally, that's my favorite video in terms of, uh, amount of work I put in because the amount of research I did, mm -hmm. like actual research, sitting down and listening to albums, uh, taking notations of cadences, production, who was on the production, the songwriters, the lyrics, um, you know, uh, the background information, watching interviews about the album, any marketing, any material rollout. Like it was a lot of time, love, and effort like put into that. So that whole process of making that video was fun, but it was also something that weighed on me for a while because it took time, right? You're storytelling, and when you're telling a story um, or something like that that consists of research, you have to, have to, have to, have to, uh, like purposefully, obviously, 
plot it out and be yeah. calculated with your moves. Another one of my favorite YouTubers I watch, somebody drastically different from Belizeus, Trap Lord Ross. He covers a lot of hip hop stories, right? Mm -hmm. um, and his videos are like, I'm talking about, he'll spend like two to three months Crazy. Researching. And the video will be like 30 minutes, but it's like, You'll get a whole story it, break down all these clues like that ass like the FBI. It's so informational <laughs> and there's so many things on that video that you're just knowing that editing team. It took them a grip just from the research part and then going over to recording it and then the actual editing of it. You understand why these things take and then some of them are like two to two and a half to three hours. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking God, you made a movie. Mm -hmm. You legit made a freaking documentary on this situation. So, like, two of his biggest videos are, like, three hours, two and a half hours. Um, and he's covering, like, situations that have happened uh, in the hip-hop community. And it's like, you're like, bro, you 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 might as well be damn Marvel Studios. You just put yeah. together a, you know what I'm saying? This is a Discovery Channel documentary, right? You're giving me the facts. You're giving me the cutaways, the actual videos, the news clips, the web. Like, you're doing all this. So it's it's cool because it's like, I know that took a lot of time, which isn't a bad thing because you got to respect them for the amount of work they put in, especially being a content creator and seeing that. You're like, oh, I already know for somebody like you. Now they can afford teams and stuff like that to work. But you're just knowing even so as an individual, that's a lot of work. That is a lot of work. Uh, so, you know, to bring it all back around, the struggle was with finding something for me that stuck, right? To your point, I switched up because I didn't know myself. I didn't know my identity and content creation, to be transparent with you. And I felt like what I was doing, um, it wasn't sticking for me. Something was still missing. There was something that was kind of uh, like the missing ingredient, so to speak, right? So as we've been doing Keep It A Buck, and I'm beginning to kind of figure more and more of that out and kind of understand more and more of myself, you know, Cam, funny enough, introduced me to this, uh, as, you know, and you guys actually had uh, the gentleman on here. Uh, John, yeah, John, who yeah. did the who did it, but the seventy five hard challenge, right? I um, mean, it's a big like mental aptitude challenge. To essentially, um, make yourself uncomfortable, but the point of it is to again find out a lot more about who you are and challenge a lot of your natural tendencies and ways you've fallen into. So you know, can't put me on it. And as I started doing more research into it and listening to the podcast, and I have the book coming in here this week, um, and just reading information on it, like. The biggest thing I'm taking away for it is I can combine this with other aspects of my life to like reset myself essentially, not rely too much on things that really don't matter, but yeah. now sit here and take the time to decompress, right? Get off social media for 75 days and just put that stuff down completely. Focus on content creation and more so sticking to myself, you know, instead of getting on my phone and getting on an Instagram or Twitter or checking Snapchat or something like that, I can look at other resources that can help me in my content creation and me plotting and marketing, reading a book, doing something um, to where, again, I don't believe social media is evil by any means in the sense, and I'm not against it. Um, I'm, I'm a big user of it and I know what it does for not only a brand, but for an individual and for the marketing purposes. No, I, I get it, right? But I think, you know, a lot of the times, it gets too consumable to where now it's like smelling too many colognes and perfumes and a Dillard's. You got to smell the coffee bean to like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm back to reality <laughs> now. My my noses aren't clogged, right? So yeah. that's, you know, to that point. It's nice. Yeah, it's, you, it's, so it's, you, it's, you took that to, you took that to an extreme. Facts. But <laughs> you, when, for sure. when you first start, <laughs> but in my when you first start, like you're, it's going to be natural. Like, let me go to it. Let me go to it. Let me go to it. But like after a while, you just kind of forget about it. So that's, you know what I mean? And, and like I said, the plan is to get back. Right. Cause again, obviously the content has to go there and I'm still going to be producing content. Um, but the point of that is while I'm dealing with that, I'm going to be putting together a project for it, like documenting my experience and what I felt and why I'm doing it and stuff like that. And something like that makes me excited because it's really intentional. I feel like I'm showing people what it consists of for me being transparent and putting something out there that like people can look at it and be like, oh, shit. It's going to be raw. It's going to be real. It's going to cover everything, right? So the meetings, when I still come over here, my day-to-day -day life, going to work, going to work out, covering like some of the hardest moments, some of the good moments, getting some of my honest thoughts. It's, it's, it's going to be a documentary, right? But to do that, I know I need to be intentional with that and I need to fully commit myself to it. And at the same time, I need to take it as serious as I want to take the content, right? I can't get on here and start bullshitting with y'all. Excuse my language, but I can't because that's just a reflection on 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 me, right? Yeah. If I, I can't I can't step up to the plate and let y'all down, right? I can't step up to the plate and let the people around me down, right? Um, I can't step up to the plate and let myself down. But 
it, to me, again, to that point, driving all the way back, it's it comes to y'all because I don't I don't want to let y'all down, right? I don't want to let the people who have really like really supported me in this and really stuck with me and kind of stuck together with my bullshit and and kept continue to push me. I, there's no way in hell I can let y'all down. But the good thing about that is it keeps me accountable to figure my stuff out. So when I engage into something like 75 Hard and I'm and and you know I'm I'm reading and I'm changing up my diet and I'm changing up my lifestyle and I'm taking myself and putting myself in an uncomfortable position, but it's forcing me to grow. I feel like naturally I'm gonna be able to overcome a lot of the stuff I feel like I'm dealing with and get to the bottom of a lot of things. And then at the end of that, it's gonna make me. That's I mean that's what the point is, right? Which it's putting myself in an uncomfortable position, but that that's what growth is. Right, we had to put ourselves in some uncomfortable positions to get to where we want to be and, and where we're at, you know, through whatever phase in life, whether it be lifestyle, whether it be you know your financial, your financial health, or your health in life, whether it be uh, your physical health, whether it be uh, you know obviously creating content and putting yourself as a brand. A lot of people, you know, try to find themselves, and a lot of a lot of things have to figure themselves out. Uh, but if you don't put yourself out there and put yourself in an uncomfortable position to do so and force yourself, um, you're kind of just going to ride the wave of complacency and then time's going to pass. And before you know it, you're going to be living um, in this place of what ifs and kind of be victimized. And the last thing I refuse to do is really is to be a victim. Mm -hmm. um, so I, like I said, I, I want to, I want to challenge myself and I want to keep myself accountable. Uh, and hopefully with that, you know, I plan on starting it right before the year ends. Um, and then it should end right before my birthday. So again, I'm hoping to kind of embrace that challenge that, and challenge myself going into a new year to see where my mind can take me. And then once I get out of that, what I can do. And like I said, throughout that, I'm still, you know what I'm saying? It allows me to focus a lot off of myself and give more towards opinionated, right? Can I, can I put clips out? Can I edit? Can I jump in and help somebody else if help is needed? Can I do something for the brand if the brand is needed? Can I step up and be a team player? I don't want the attention to be on me, right? I want to just do what I need to do for everybody else. And I'm a, I'm a firm believer of, you know, doing work regardless of if there's light, right? The integrity, doing what needs to be done, and that everything that's supposed to come is going to come in the, when it's supposed to. So that's why I'm not pressed about it, right? It's gonna If it's meant for me, it's going to come. If it's yeah. not, it's never going to. And I'm okay with that. Because, it's not, it's, you know, I, again, I, tr I trust a higher power than me, and I'm... I'm not really gonna doubt anything else. If I put the work in and I hold myself accountable of my responsibilities, everything's gonna play <clears throat> itself out in the end. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, going off of kind of what you talked about, content being intentional and stuff. Um, you know, just shooting like just shooting stuff, because I mean that's lately how I've been feeling. Not not more of like because we put out a a lot of content, especially yeah. lately. Yeah. But it's like more so like Carlos has been editing other stuff, like gaming videos and stuff. I've been editing, I've been doing some special projects for Opinionated, like, on my own, just to take, like, my creative energy somewhere else. Cause yeah. essentially, when you're doing, like, research or reactions or even with us doing, like, 54 Yards or sports shows, like, don't get me wrong, we love it, it's fun, the conversations are good, the, you know, the content's good, you get Absolutely. the factual news out, but at the same time, you're not really pushing yourself creatively, like, you're not being like, okay, let, like I have this idea. Like, how am I gonna get this idea out? The storytelling, yeah, like that. and then even like the editing too. Like the editing is so monotonous with like a podcast or a sports show or whatever we're doing. It, it's oh, just it not do so much. Yeah, that's really, so, you know what I mean. That's it doesn't what, help you like grow really. As that's like where music. You think about the concept of an album, right? Yeah. An album is its own album or mixtape. It's its own independent being. Yeah, and it's it, it's uh, the only correlation with it is the artist that's put it out. But that's it, you know. You could say, "Hey, let me go listen to Drake's." Uh, you know, I'm using Drake because that's the guy. Uh, use Drake's "Thank Me Later," his first debut album. Mm -hmm. And then you go to um, "Honestly, Never Mind." Mm -hmm. Like what? What? Where? Where did that? Whoa! <laughs> but they're two separate entities that come with two yeah. different. It doesn't feel like a. To your point, a. Plus, you're so seasonal. Like a person is just so seasonal. Um, just on the recap last night with CJ, like he was talking about like seasonal depression and stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, it gets colder, it gets darker quicker. I mean, lately it's been raining a lot. I walk outside, it's um, 2 a.m. and cold. I'm you know like, ah. <laughs> and all, I feel like all that stuff is very, like, goes back into like your content creation, goes back into your like your life as a person, your being as a person. For example, Carl just takes his whole year off from social media and he takes a lot of time to himself to decompress. He just went through a big seasonal change in his life. And now he's entering a new season in wherever that's going to take him. Even for me, like going into this year with the content creation, 
you know, taking it real serious, like essentially trying to like, I know, I know everyone's in their own world right now, but yeah. I was like, for me, I, I know how much I can give to this and kind of bring everybody with everything. And, you know, everybody's going to have their duty and time. There's going to be a time for everybody to have to exactly. step up in a way. Cause there's going to be some times where someone might lack or whatever the case may be. And just, you know, having that creative, like outlet having you know that focus and things like that is just with that seasonal change you just have to really do certain things to kind of figure it out and everybody's different right yeah. like everybody goes about it their own way and um picking back off of that you so you talked about your 75 days challenge that you want to do and making content from that and he asked you about some of the challenges that you face but there's been something that you've always talked about and you kind of talked about it earlier with music um, and my boy Cayman's back now. He's uh he makes music and things like that. Yeah, shout and you were working KO. with uh Leo Tucker. Yeah, Trey. Shout, yeah, 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 yeah. That boy Zodiac. Yeah, yeah you're working with Trey guy. and uh, he R. makes R. music. Zodiac. You didn't know that? Yeah. No. Trey, hey, I haven't heard, wait, Trey I haven't heard first of all, I just haven't heard that name <laughs> in <laughs> ages. Trey Tucker. No, yeah. my boy Zodiac. Yeah, went to park Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Literally, wow. he does gameplay and he does music. Yeah, me and him are cold. Zodiac gaming, Zodiac game, and Zodiac in general. He has oh, two Zodiac. projects out now on Apple Music. I he's, do. He, like he uh, maybe does he have his his original? I have to check to see if he has his first mixtape on here. But he he at least has two EPs out now on Apple Music. Y'all go clap that. That's that's fire. Yeah, yeah. Shameless. shameless How's his uh, gaming? It's good, bro. He he. So he he does single player. Uh, Story mode games, right? So he's like a Rad Brad type of a uh, gamer. No face cam, but his commentary is really what drives it. And it's, I love it, right? So a lot of games that um, I don't really, you know, I'm not going to play um, or I haven't got the time to get around to, I'll watch Trey play. And so, like, he'll be, he he just did a, a Ghostwire Tokyo not too long ago. Um, and is that the game where you, like, make decisions? No, that I'm, was I'm a. That I, I think you know, like, you have PlayStation where you get you like make decisions. Yeah, so time? you're probably thinking of like the Devil in Me or the Quarry. Okay. Those are the like Quarry those. was the most recent one where the, you make decisions. The Devil in Me just came out after that, but the Quarry was right before that. Did it? Uh huh. The Quarry was made. You're by, right. You're right. You're the right. The Quarry was right. made by the same people yeah, that yeah, made yeah, Heavy yeah, Rain. Yeah. Or yeah. Not Heavy Rain. Um, uh, until Dawn. Uh huh. And mm-hmm. then the the Devil in Me was made by uh. Uh, Madon Productions. They made other like games similar to that. Yeah, um, with Corey and me, I know for sure that you pick like what's mm-hmm. gonna happen. Yeah, for your character and everything. Yeah. Like, yeah. So uh, he does those single player like story driven games for the most part. And uh, he did Cyberpunk. He did uh, Dying Light Two. Channel Healthy. Um, Channel Healthy. His? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah one good. of the most one of the most consistent content creators I know. And he does shorts. He do, I'm telling you, like Trey is another one of those guys that I I look up to his content. Um, and I feel like he's somebody who is like, just, he sticks to his grind. He sticks to his content and he is very consistent with it. And as a content creator, as a person, I, I just, I naturally respect his flow and his hustle. Cause I mean, it's, it, it speaks for itself. He's funny as much as I play games. I don't watch. There's only one gaming YouTube that I did watch and that was Dashy. Dashy. Yeah. yeah. Camden, Camden, fuck with Dashy. But Back that in the was day, he just annoyed the shit. <laughs> that that was like yeah. the very first one that I watched. I, I mean, I, I stopped watching them. Um, I mean, I'm just I'm not I'm not on YouTube like that. Yeah. But even you just kind of outgrow certain. Uh, I agree with that. I agree with that. But I, also, I went back like, and I watched, used to watch Chris Smooth, and I really don't watch him anymore. I, I, I went back uh, and watched uh, oh, like his newest like stuff, and like I still laugh, and it was still good. And I yeah. still like watching. I just I really don't watch YouTube like I, that anymore. I, I mean, I feel that. I don't know, man. I feel like uh, especially you watch Dashy. That, yeah, I watched yeah. a little bit of Dashy. Well, I watch um because you know Dashy um Dashy's like excuse me, he's in the same realm of like content creators like Corey Extension and them. I don't know who that is. You don't know who Corey is? I saw yeah, that honestly, I was like that was, is, Dashy's man. the only was the only person I watched unless Dashy brought him on, um Shout like his samurai. his uh channel. Yeah, then I wouldn't know like um John Witherspoon's son. Um, yes, I know exactly what you're talking name. about. Mm-hmm. Um, I know what you're talking about. He. He Dashy brought him onto his show, and that's the only reason I knew he made gaming content. What Dashy was because of that? No, well, Dashy was the reason I knew that John Witherspoon's son made made, made the yeah, yes. yeah, 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 okay, okay. Um, no, nah, so like with what we do, and especially us being on YouTube, that's why I really got into YouTube is because obviously I love sponsoring the, the creators and everything. Um, but uh, like I said, man, um, so to your point earlier, um, that gave me a good opportunity, like I said, more so to express myself and to really get in the bag. Um, and the, the plans are still there, Yeah, I feel like. 
Mm. It's about timing, I feel like, you know? That exactly. So if you think about it right, so a lot of um think about it like this, right? So a, a lot of folks use opportunities that they have to kind of expand into other platforms, right? Uh, one of the best examples recently, we've talked about him a lot, is Kenny, right? Kenny Vaccaro, mm-hmm. and how he took you know his playing career and is now elevated into the collective in G1. Mm-hmm. And the transition was so flawlessly, but without football and that career, I don't think he would have been able to do yeah, that. Yeah, you really. have to have some kind of, I mean, something, I mean, in that, you have to have something to like essentially do more things. Exactly. And for us, like even having a podcast, and I was talking to CJ, like, it, like us as being strictly a podcast. Yeah. Since we're not popular, and now that podcast is like the trendy thing to do when you're already popular, like, oh, let's go start a podcast because I'm already famous. Yeah. Like, my audience is going to watch me talk. Yeah. Right? But for us, like, we could have whoever on, but nobody knows me and Carlos for doing anything yeah, you outside know I mean? of this. Yeah. So it's always, like like you said, you, it's it's about trying to build something in another realm to, you know, allow you over to more of the easier realms. Even Carlos, like, when, he, when it comes to streaming, he talks about all the time, like, I want to stream, but... Like, I'd rather be able to do it when we have this falling from PNA and I can just be like, yeah, I'm going to play the game stream. Like, come and watch it. Exactly. You know? So, like, for me, I am I told you, bro, I'm, the reason the music has been on the back burner, and don't get me wrong, I'll, I'll spit a mean 16 anytime, anywhere you throw on a beat. <laughs> look, 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 that's besides the point. Um, at J. Cole has a really cool bar. He says, you know, what? what's the point of, you know, having all this if, if your people don't have it, right? Um, there's... There's no, there's never been a point to me to where I feel like I have to have success and it has to be a solo thing or it even has to be a selfish thing or it even has to be a me thing or a now thing, right? And I feel like that's a lot of, a lot of what comes naturally with growing as a platform in what you do, whatever you do. Even if you don't make content creation, even in your job, right? You have to naturally think like growing wise, you're not, you're not necessarily growing, um, to go jump to the immediate top without a little bit of work and a little bit of investment. A lot of the time it takes a minute of putting the work in naturally for it to come to you. So yeah. in that same instance, when it comes to the brand, I want my work to be done for others, right? I'm a servant, right? Mm-hmm. I'm here because of y'all. So the work is due for y'all. And within that, it's a biblical thing too. Within doing work for others, you find more so of who you are, right? So within helping y'all, within doing what, needs to be done for opinionated within growing this maybe i find myself and then i'm able to really dive into content creation on a personal level um and i don't mean like just putting content out in general no but more or less like what really sticks with me right so once we get opinionated to the spot where we're in the studio we've built our brand and we have the resources now right and everything is there for us and then i have the resources to sit in the back of that studio and make some music then i can sit in the back of that yeah. studio and make some music because the resources are available right yeah but that that doesn't have to be right now, yeah. and I'm okay with that because the point of it is, if if I'm gonna find, I'm not I'm not saying if if I'm not gonna find a way, I won't make it happen. Obviously, that's a big thing, but yeah, I'm gonna make it happen. I'm gonna find a way, but I'm gonna take care of those around me and invest into what's going on around mm-hmm. me and to those I love and care about, because within that, I truly feel like I'll find a lot more of myself. I'll eventually it's gonna come. Mm-hmm. I just need to take care of what, like I said, what my responsibilities are now. To let it all come together, and then in that process, like I said, it'll it, it'll all come together, mm-hmm. and I don't have a problem doing that because again, I don't I don't feel like it's necessarily about one person, one thing, one place. When it's it's the bigger picture, so it's all about laying down the foundation. That's it, and just building on that. Yeah. Well, getting towards the end of this, wrapping it up, but there's some a question I've always been curious about. Who are your biggest inspirations? And then I want—I'm going to ask you some more stuff after that. But go jump it off. Uh, biggest inspirations, uh, God first and foremost, right? I mean, I'm—that's—that's that's not even like a. Like, Ain't even a debate. Oh, bro, legit. Like that's where I get like that's why I'm breathing, right? You know, I'm I'm blessed to be in this position, and I, I take that seriously. So every day, I just try to be grateful for that, right? And I try to remember why I was uh, put here on this earth, and that's right to be a servant. That's to enjoy this moment, right? That's to breathe life, and really. To, you know, to love. So, um, obviously, like, God is my biggest inspiration. Aside from that, I got to I gotta give my parents um, their credit for everything they've done in my life and everything they've done as individuals. Um, I, it starts with them, obviously, right? So, uh, your people are always going to be, uh, I feel like, for me personally, my, my people were the people that really, like, breathed life into me, right? They really gave me a lot of who I was and really helped mold me into the person I am now. Um, so, without them, I wouldn't even be here. 
uh, and w- what they've done for my life. I, like I said, I, I'm, I'm just nothing less than gracious. A lot of my family naturally takes the inspiration spot. Um, I want to say people like my grandma, my grandpa, my auntie, my uncle, a lot of them, man, they really, 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 really held it down. Um, and it's just a lot of what they've given me. And that's yeah. more sentimental than it is anything else, right? Um, aside from that, obviously, people like Kobe Bryant um, and his work mentality, uh, that's always been something I've always just adored because, again, it's Kobe, right? You're always going to get the job done, but, you know, there's no point in celebrating until the job's finished. So uh, it's... Yeah, it's always smiling. Job ain't done. You know what I'm Once saying? Smile, but Kobe, for sure. Kobe, you're up 2-1 with the finals. Uh, is, there, is there a reason you're not smiling or anything? You know, Job's not done. You know what I mean? All right, Peter, my man. I'm, so... Um, Kobe, and then again, another RP, Nipsey Hustle. Uh, Nip had this real, like, long term mentality, right? He had this real, the marathon. And that's what life is, essentially, right? You know, we're not guaranteed another day, but at the same time, everything is day by day. So, in, in this thing we call life and in everything we do, we have to, you know, take our time to be present, be in every moment, don't give up, don't falter, don't fall off. We have to be present and we have to give everything we got so the idea of the marathon and just what he did as a leader for his community uh, what he gave back to his people was it like i said it's priceless exactly exactly so um just off top like i said those are probably some of the ones that come closer to heart uh and like i said you know goes into some of my idols you know shout out like i said some of the guys i mentioned other youtube wise uh berlizzi rdc world obviously uh the amp guys um, you know, Drake, obviously. Mm-hmm. Th- those just more so in the creative aspect. Yeah. People, I respect their hustle and their flow, right, and what they've done and what they put out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I take a lot of, again, a lot of good stuff from that and, you know, just be a student in the game and learn. Yeah. What are some of your goals for OPM and just, you know, just trying to take the, you know, the collective or group we're, we're building movement to the next level? Like anything special you want to accomplish next year? Any big projects besides the ones you said earlier? Um, 75 Days Hard, I feel like, will be a good start to understanding a lot more of that for myself personally. Mm-hmm. But in that moment too, it gives me a lot of more focus to spend on the team and on the, on, you know, just on us. Um, so I want to, I want to commit myself to being a lot more um, selfless. I don't feel like I'm selfish, but I, I would rather see what I can do uh, when it comes to marketing. All right, when it comes to establishing our namesake, when it comes to putting our stuff out, whatever that looks like for us to grow our brand. Yeah. Um, I just want to be a team player, right? And I want to yeah. put myself out there. So that's more so kind of my goal is just to be. Um, kind of a, a plug and play piece, right? Wherever you guys need me, I'm there. Whatever needs to be done gets done. Uh, and there's not a reason and not an excuse. We can't be great, right? Yeah. I mean, kind of just keep us accountable. Um, I can't be here without y'all. And y'all have built this strictly off the backs of accountability, right? Mm-hmm. Between the two y'all and Bert, and then now bringing it to what it is with everybody that's here. I mean, it's simply just through accountability that we're here, right? Yeah. So that's more or less it's <laughs> no, it's cool for it, real. you know what i mean you see that like us getting the team and then like obviously the bigger we're gonna grow the more help we're gonna need the more hands we're gonna need we're gonna find other creators that hopefully we'll be able to put them on and bless and change their lives you, you, you got know. you got to think about it right we're essentially we're gonna get to a point and i think in size essentially because of what we all represent we are but i mean we're gonna get to a point naturally to where we you know we're we're the we're the same production teams putting out you know, the content that everybody's watching, right? We're exactly. putting out optic style documentaries. Yeah. We're putting out, um, you know, discussion. Like, we're putting out, like, prof- I mean, I think we already put out professional content, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think there's really too much that separates us from a lot of people other than the fact we're probably just under the radar, so to speak. Yeah. But that doesn't take it away from the quality, right? Mm-hmm. So I can't wait to see, with everything that comes together, what can what can show for it, right? Yeah. Uh, but like I said, that's just more so the investment. So I just, like I said, I think my biggest goal is uh, being a plug and play and using that, like I said, for the group and then getting out of 75 hard, seeing how I can carry that over and use that momentum naturally to, uh, <clears throat> you know, just uh, just to sit in myself, um, get a better understanding of myself, keep myself accountable and really keep moving, seeing how I can grow as an individual too. Mm-hmm. And um. Shit, I that's really it. Um, for me, um, anything for you? No, I mean, what, question. Before I hit this thing off, you got anything for us? <sighs> Where were we all on the night of? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, man, I let me just give y'all y'all's flowers right as we get to the end um, of this year and kind of everything I've done right. 
I, I think a lot of what y'all do, again, naturally goes uncredited. I think y'all have provided a lot of opportunities uh, just for the people in the group. But I think what y'all don't realize is because of some thoughts you guys originally set probably like three or four years ago, some things y'all chatted between y'all when y'all were in college and you were out of state and some ideas you floated has now turned into this, right? And through that four years ago, you're here in this position now. So if you think about the conversations y'all have had in those circumstances and what consistent application has done and where we sit at now having this conversation, you have to sit here and seriously give you guys, like give yourself some credit. Like I know you guys work your asses off and you do this content thing and you guys are really like gung ho and you guys are always consistent and you guys are always putting everybody else first. But seriously, take the time to appreciate yourselves and what y'all have built, because that shit is crazy. There's not a lot of people that can naturally put up with a lot of what y'all have. And I think, I don't think, I, I'm not saying nobody doesn't give you guys the appreciation and the love and the respect you deserve, but I don't know naturally if you guys do that enough for yourselves because of everything y'all done. So take the time, whenever it may be, to truly acknowledge and appreciate what you guys have given to this brand and what you guys have done, not only for yourselves, but for the people around y'all and who y'all have brought together. Because you know. that's 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 crazy, bro. That shit don't make no sense at all. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and yet, by some miracle means, we are all sitting here having meetings, talking, having discussions. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No, for real. It goes back to the meetings that we had in the summer. Um, you know, us kind of that was kind of the foundational pieces of stuff. And even now, like, you know, talking to Bash and Key and maybe getting them more involved and, you know, just trying to figure out other ways to kind of really bring that collective yeah like one one whole thing and even you know shout out to the accountability text that we do on mondays like every monday i look forward to seeing what everybody has planned for the week absolutely goal wise personal content related or whatever and it's just cool to have those check-ins and reflections not to make it more of like i have to do these things but yeah. kind of you know put it out there put it in front of you i was talking to carlos and cj about us getting more concrete and intentional what we're doing instead of just you know getting in the flow of things putting out content okay we gotta put out content to grow whatever yeah but it's I, like it's year I, four it's like now we need to put out content that's meaningful and purposeful and that's gonna actually like be beneficial to the and brand and helping and us grow that's that's what it stands and about it's we gotta you know allocate resources and time to do things outside that people might not see or they might see six months later that are really gonna help us grow and really you know solidify the brand so what does that look like? Planning, making sure we're taking the steps to get there. Because if we don't do that, we're just going to kind of be doing the same thing over and over again. And that's never where we want to take it. We want to make it, you know, a global brand, a media brand, a lifestyle, all that stuff. Yeah. So now it's, it's really about, like, pushing the gas and just grateful to have you, like, join, yeah. essentially. Like, welcome to Opinionated. Yeah, I'm saying I was <laughs> Uh, that shit is crazy. I was grateful to be here, man. Um, piggybacking you know, yeah. on what he said, um, I mean, appreciate all the all the words you just said. I mean, hey, appreciate that our work doesn't go unnoticed or what we've done doesn't go unnoticed. But um, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever sit back and appreciate no. what we've done. It probably until this is what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. It'll be one of those days where we're sitting in the studio. Pull up, I pull up maybe at nine oh five. Carl's might have been there at seven or something. Yeah, I pull up, just sit down, and you just look up or you look at the computer or whatever you're doing. You're like, you're like Damn, I really, I really do this random, every so random, random. Every, it's gonna be a random ass day. Yeah. You'll be like, I really do this. But every one day. time, one time that it will hit me. Um, I think just more off emotionally is at the end of this lease. Um, it's because yeah. it's when all this will just kind of go away. Uh, not like go away, but like the, yeah, like, the first the, like OG is, set yeah. location. Yeah, like, yeah. Because it's either gonna be we have somewhere to shoot that's a studio, or we're gonna have to shoot it at someone's house or apartment or whatever until yeah. we figure out what the studio is gonna look like. Exactly. Or whatever. So it's gonna be you know it's weird, it's right? OG. It's OG. Yeah. Like I mean, this is the first we've had some b big ass names in here, especially we made a lot of memories here. Yeah, yeah memories. you guys have done a lot of crazy. So, we all have, man. When, and probably you guys have, when the last day we're here is when we're walking out, just like taking everything down. Yeah, that's gonna be yeah, and that's as gonna it be. as it rightfully is, you know. I mean, it, it's they they say it's the closing of one chapter and the beginning of another, but really is it's the advancement onto the next stage of what life is supposed to bring you, what this what this group is supposed to bring y'all. 
Um, and like I said, that that's just gonna mean again, you know, we we maybe we go into a house now, right? And we're in a we're in an actual house and we're shooting this, and then that house turns into an actual studio. So now, you know, there's an opinionated studio in Austin, Texas, and this is where we're running the content out of, right? Um, and and it just grows and it grows and it grows. Um, and that that's the point of it, right? You know, I, I'm sure y'all have experienced a lot of uncomfortable moments. I'm I'm sure it's tough as hell to be the shooting location, right? The mutual spot for everybody, <laughs> right? And then you guys are also the host, a right? Lot of so foot you, traffic. You know what I'm saying? You guys naturally facilitate a lot of things in here. Even before we were like really shooting a lot like that, like we had poker nights here. Like we always were, we've always been like the spot. You know what I mean? So there's a reason they call this, you know, this it is HQ because it's <laughs> that's where everything happens. That is where everything you know goes down at. So. Who's to say that next year isn't something crazy or bigger, right? The following year, be. who's you know what I mean? Yeah, and all, all 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 it takes is literally the right conversation with somebody. Exactly, they might be like, "Damn, like I like what you're doing. It might help you out." Or it takes the right video blowing up and you're popping and you're on. That's you all it takes. I mean? And all it takes is one moment. And we live in a viral society, so all somebody has to do is just see one clip, see one thing, hear you one know. piece, hear hear something, see something, feel something, touch something, right? Whatever it may be, right? They just experience it, and they're like, "Yeah." And then that experience gets passed on, and so forth, and everything. So, you know, keep keep grinding. You know, we that that's, you know, everything that you guys do is is crazy. And the fact we're here in this moment right now is, like I said, it's it's nothing less of a blessing and a miracle. But there's only so much more to go, and so much more we have to do. So, mm-hmm. indeed, indeed. Um, well, again, thank you for taking time out your day. Um, oh, bro! Like I, I said was, I know. I've been waiting on this for some years, man. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> uh, that it, 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 it means a lot for you to just even sit here and, and sit down and talk to us. Yes, sir. Um, but um, again, thank you for all the kind words you said as well. Absolutely. Um, I think I can speak for both of us that what you're doing inside of OPM um, is helping us a lot, and it also means a lot. Because mm-hmm. uh, so, I mean it. It was me, me, Albert, and Cam, and or Cam, Albert, and I, and I mean, our content was here, but and all of us here now are just going to the next yeah, level. It, it's cool, man. Like, yeah, it's a, it. especially when we're all like flowing like that. Like we know, I know we can. Like that train, you know, like everything's one moving motion. You got you posting, us posting, PCT posting. Everybody's doing something. Like yesterday, like I was, it was super dope. Carlos was, even though it's all in house in here, Carlos is in there editing. We're out here learning the roadcaster, learning how to, you know, put the sound bites on there, yeah. how to use it. All of us, Alex is like looking up videos and then he's like, oh, come, he comes over here. He's showing me like what he's looking at. Yeah. I'm on the headset, like messing with it. Cats, you know, in my room making merch and like doing that type of stuff, doing like more of the operations stuff. So it's cool to like see like, because it's, it's just like, damn, this is what it's going to be. I mean, you it, know, it is, visual, you know what I mean? It, and it's it's just the early stages of it, and, yeah. you know? I mean, it's a company you're building, right? You know, it's going to take some time, but we're, we're still... A lot, in, of, a lot of growth. Oh, that's it. That's, that's it's, it. It's, it's, hey, it's, and, and growth ain't never hurt nobody, yeah, right? Scary and exciting. You'd rather be growing For sure. <laughs> you'd rather be growing than regressing, right? Absolutely. Sure. You know what yeah. I mean? So, look, man, we're in a position to where we can do what we can do, and we just got to keep doing it, so... Yes, sir, yes, sir. You know sir. what I mean? So... Um, but, again... Um, I don't know how we get down. He's family. A.O. Rue everywhere. A.O. Rue everywhere. That's everywhere. It. That's it. Everywhere. Just, just like, like that. Just, just literally. Just like that. Just A.O. Like Rue. A.O. Rue. Simple. Sweet. Uh, to the point. Literally. Yes, sir. Yeah. You can um, have me on PlayStation Network. Well, I forgot you don't PlayStation your PC game. You can have me on P. I think PC uh, PC for Activision is A.O. Rue too. So whenever you're, whenever you're scared. Uh, you're the. I've said something twice and you haven't said anything. I did. So I responded the first time. The first, And then I've said something twice after that. And you, uh, you just straight up. You didn't it. the first opportunity. What makes you think I should double back around to. I, I said something <laughs> and then, hey, I called you you out and then hey <laughs> nothing happened and then i called you out again after i called you out the first time well, or the second time well you and, and everybody else happened. can find me at ao root that's all i'm saying all man. right you, all you right, and all everybody right. else I, um but make sure to tune in and keep it a buck i mean hey, if, if you ain't tuned in already then you, you need to be uh, they put out special content over there um good words to hear um so yeah nice good. change of pace for nice sure. change of pace yeah um but that'll do it for another episode of opinionated off topic we'll catch y'all guys next time peace peace